I am at the De Young Museum in San Francisco. I'm visiting Monet, The Late Years, an exhibition featuring about 50 canvases of Claude Monet that he painted during his stay at Giverny, a village 60 kilometers away from Paris, where he lived uh, for the second half of his life, from about the age of 43 until his death in 1926, at the age of 86. So this is the first room of the exhibition called Securing Success. It is dedicated to Monet's earliest, some of the earliest paintings of water lilies uh, in his garden. And these three works were um, actually shown in the exhibition in 1909. That was the first major show of uh, water lilies. He spent almost five years preparing for it, sometimes in great agony. Uh, destroying some canvases and postponing the date of the show, uh, working uh, again and again on the subject, the water lilies. Overall, he made 48 canvases for the show, and it was a tremendous success. A lot of them sold to American collectors. This was the entrance onto the stage of his series, Water Lilies. Also in the first room, uh, these four paintings, the two of them earlier, 1986, Morning on the Sand and the Japanese Footbridge is from 1899. And I'd like to show you this painting so that you can compare it later on to his um, later version of the same subject matter and its remarkable transformation or perhaps degradation. This is another subject I want to show you, the artist's uh, house at Giverny and the view of his uh, house from the garden. Uh, this is 1912-1913, uh, the time when he was um, diagnosed with cataract, uh, 1912 to be exact, and uh, you already see a certain change in his color, in his palette. And this is the subject that again is going to deteriorate and change with his cataract developing and his eyesight getting worse. We'll see some more later. So this is the second room of the exhibition uh, with uh, water lilies that were painted uh, starting from about 1913 onwards. It's the next stage of the development of the subject uh, that uh, was preceded by uh, his, uh, the death of his wife, the beginning of the First World War, and perhaps uh, because of the cataract, he's also becoming colorblind. So the scale is much more uh, monumental. As you can see, uh, the strokes are incredibly thick, and um, this is uh, very emotional compared to the previous series, right? It's an unusual point of view. You see in this particular one, it's almost like we're a little ant or a little insect looking up above onto the flowers. And uh, a lot of these pieces also look unfinished. Look, you can even see the canvas, raw canvas uh, in this piece all throughout. See that beige, whitish area? It's, it's really avant-garde for the time and they almost uh, look like they're sketches and we don't know whether they were finished compositions um, or not. That's, that's the beauty of it. And this is room number three with paintings of the garden and the water lilies on an even grander scale. Perhaps uh, most of these pieces were preparatory paintings for his grand decorations, Grand Decoration at the um, Orangerie Musée, uh, Orangerie in Paris, it's uh, huge oval rooms with many feet of canvas wrapped around the room, all depicting water lilies and the garden. It's almost um, the three, this 3D immersive um, effect that they have. And they didn't bring them here to the museum because they're on the permanent view at the Orangerie. 
uh, but they are displaying some of the paintings he painted simultaneously uh, from about 1915, 16 uh, until 1919 19, and 20. And they have the same subject matter, they are similar in color to some of the Grand Decoration. And of course, these are one of the more well known water lily series. Uh, in a horizontal format. You see all immersive, swirly, uh, circular color strokes, uh, layers and layers of paint, and uh, it's almost like he's trying to depict not only what is happening on the surface of the water, but also down below, underneath it. This is the first part of the fourth and final room of the exhibition Monet of the Late Years. This is when Monet's cataract becomes worse and worse and uh, his uh, color blindness as well. And despite this, he keeps painting um, the same subjects again and again, in this case the Japanese bridge over the years and a look at this uh, transformation and uh, we saw the green version uh, of the late 1800s and now 1923 1925 see how it's almost hard to determine whether it's a bridge or uh, something else whether it's just an abstract composition and here it grows even more abstract and the strokes are so tormented it's definitely the reflection of his inner world more than anything else that he sees. Or perhaps he is almost blind and this is what he's extracting from his memory of the place. There is a, a myth, uh, there is a theory that he maybe returned to these pieces later on when he got uh, surgery and his vision became more clear and he started overpainting the red of the bridge with green, realizing that the color is off. And here is the last part. Another series, four, five paintings of uh, weeping willows, uh, supposedly mournful paintings, uh, because they were done in 1918. It's the end of the First World War, uh, when France had uh, remarkable losses, 40% of the male population uh, was gone. And uh, Monet spent most of this time in Giverny on his own because uh, all of his gardeners and his uh, servants left as the uh, German forces were approaching and he refused to leave. He said that he's going to die next to the uh, labor of his whole life, and even if Germans want to kill him. And uh, this is the end of the war, and uh, his sorrow and the sense of loss is perhaps transpiring in this series. This is the most remarkable one. Look at this. Certainly wasn't shown uh, in his lifetime. Uh, most probably a sketch, absolute abstraction. You know, this could be 1950s, right? And the last and final series I want to show you is uh, Monet's house seen from his rose garden. These are all from 1922, 1924. Uh, he died in 1926, so these are one of his last paintings uh, because in the last year he only worked on the grand decorations. This is before he gets his cataract surgery and perhaps he could hardly see anything and these are all from his mind's eye or he could just see uh, the blurs and the outlines and then he fills it in with the color that his mind perceives not the one that his eye could possibly uh, see if it, it was healthy now I'll tell you a little secret you see um, the, the frames are all the same on all these pieces 
That's because they come from the um, same museum, Musée Mormontang, Mormontan Museum in Paris. And they were the paintings that were kept in his studio and not sold and not shown for a number of decades. And now they um, th and later ended up at this museum. So uh, you can tell they're not your typical impressionist Monet's and they were not particularly favored by the contemporaries. But now, of course, um, we, we recognize their importance in his overall oeuvre and their uh, almost prophetic nature foreshadowing the abstraction of uh, later years uh, all over the world.